Gacha gamers are obsessed with min-maxing in their games, and it makes sense. If you're going to dedicate a large amount of time to a new game, you probably want to start it off with some of the best characters. Rerolling ensures that you get at least one of the best units possible, making it significantly less difficult to build an effective team. I've played over 100 hours of Wuthering Waves split between both closed beta tests, and while a significant number of changes have been made to make the game substantially more enjoyable, the ability to reroll most definitely wasn't. If you're interested in making certain you start the game off right, I do have a beginner's guide that you're not going to want to miss out on, I also have a tier list, and a list of mistakes that you should avoid making when beginning the game for the first time. Links to those videos are in the description, they're in the pinned comment, and the end screen towards the end of the video. Let me preface this video by stating re-rolling is not easy. Yes, you can do it. Should you do it? Eh, let me explain what re-rolling is, and why it's not advisable in Wuthering Waves. Rerolling consists of logging into a gacha game, unlocking the ability to not only obtain your rewards via the mail, but to also do gacha pulls. Typically, many games possess the option for logging in as a guest. This makes it easy to start an account, skip through the tutorial as fast as you can, get to the gacha pulls, and restart if you fail to attain the character you're after. Wuthering Waves does not provide that feature, instead you're required to make an account. There is no guest login option, which increases the time it takes by an exponential margin. Which is why I'm of the opinion that re-rolling, unless you're determined to obtain the 5 star character you want, is not worth it. Nevertheless, let's go through how you re-roll and who you should be re-rolling for. Some of you might get lucky on the first attempt, some of you might spend days before giving up. Either way, I plan on helping you as best as I can. Before jumping in though, I'd like to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon and my YouTube channel members who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are all the best and I cannot thank you all enough for the support. There are going to be multiple avenues to acquire 5 star resonators. Kudo confirmed they'll be providing us with a novice banner which guarantees you a 5 star character after 50 pulls. This banner will have 20% off all pulls, meaning instead of 50 illustrious tides, the currency for this banner, it'll require 40. You only get one shot at this and then it disappears. The resonator you obtain will be completely random. There will also be a selector banner, which directly follows the closure of the novice banner. Once you've successfully pulled on that specific banner 80 times, you're guaranteed a free 5-star character of your choice. Your options are Dianchin, Kakaro, Varina, Lingyang, and Encore. As part of the pre-registration milestones, we're given 20 lustrous tides and 200 asteroid. As part of the social media follower milestone, we're given a free 4-star weapon of our choice. They're mailing 10 lustrous tide and 10 radiant tide to us on the 24th and 25th of May respectively. You'll receive 4 lustrous tide and 4 radiant tide, including Sanhua, after logging in for 7 days. Upon reaching a union level of 55, you're guaranteed 40 Lustrous Tide, 1600 Asteroid, and a 5-star Weapon Selector. You receive Yuanwu after completing the Stable Zone Challenge in the Tower of Adversity. And finally, after reaching union level 30, you're given 10 Lustrous Tide. All in all, you're being given 84 Lustrous Tides, 14 Radiant Tide, 1800 Asteroid, both Sanhua, Yuanwu, a 4-star and a 5-star weapon selector simply by playing the game for a few days. Once again, evidence of how generous Kudo is as a studio. Let's go over each of the possible 5-star resonators, then I'll tell you who you should be re-rolling for. As noted earlier, your options are Dianchen, Kakaro, Varina, Lingyang, and Encore. Let's begin with Dianchen. In my tier list, I rated her an S tier character. This is because she has good damage, she can shield, she has buffs, she has great self sustain in the form of self healing. She can pull in enemies, making AoEing them easy, maximizing damage output. Her one drawback is how long you need to have her on the field to fully maximize her utility. She's great for most content, but unfortunately, she will be a detriment to your team in the Tower of Adversity. Mothering Waves Endgame. Kalkaro is arguably some of, if not the highest potential DPS output of any Resonator right now. He can be a little difficult to control and learn, with arguably some of the more difficult combos out of the array of characters, but if you know how to control him, he's an absolute monster. He's not a great team player, lacking a lot of synergy with many of the other Resonators, but that'll change once the Yinlin releases. He's one of the better DPS for the Tower of Adversity. 
Verina is one of a very small selection of supports. I covered this in my list, noting how her only real competition was Baiji, but she is vastly inferior to Verina. Verina provides two separate attack buffs, she has a lot of healing utility, she allows the use of coordinated attacks with other resonators, which means not only does she heal, not only does she boost the raw damage output of all of your party members, but she also aids in damage even when not directly controlled. Oh, did I mention her passive can nullify fatal damage every 10 minutes? Verina is an incredibly versatile, flexible character that should not be overlooked. Ling Yang is unfortunately and arguably the worst choice of the five resonators. He can deal decent damage with his ultimate window and is a relatively easy to use character, but he just really doesn't have any beneficial buffs that would affect the party, no real support skills, making him fairly useless outside of his own self-sufficient playstyle. Every other DPS functions better in every capacity, making skipping him a no-brainer. Encore is a tricky character. She has the capacity to deal incredible single-target damage during her ultimate phase. She has a lot of utility and so that she provides a beneficial damage reduction buff that deals damage when it expires. While a very good pick for the Tower of Adversity right now, she likes a decent partner to synergize with. And this is an example here. Mortify and Jian synergize well, Kalkaro and Yinlin synergize well, but Encore, much like her character, remains alone. With this knowledge, we can safely say that Verina is the most valuable character to obtain in the game right now, with Kalkaro being your second pick. Or Encore, if you don't want to pick a husbando rather than a waifu. Both are solid second choices. Meaning, you should attempt to obtain Verina from the Novice Banner, but if you, like me, are likely going to fail, then you'll definitely want to guarantee her via the Selector Banner. And that is all you need to know. If you haven't already, Go and check out the other guides that I posted, the beginner's guide which covers everything you need to know when starting the game. These are things that are going to be imperative to succeeding in the long term. Check out my tier list if you're curious of how not only these resonators but the other resonators match up with one another, how well they synergize with one another, their unique abilities, what they're capable of doing, what they're good in, what they're bad in, a video on the mistakes that lots of people, including yourself, are likely to make. There are ways in that video to maximize the accumulation of Asterite to give you more pulls, what you should prioritize doing, things you don't want to skip, things you don't want to miss, what you should be saving your Aftershocked Coral for, why you shouldn't be leveling your characters. See, if you're wondering why I've discussed all of this in my video, you need to check it out. Not only are they all equally as important as one another, but I plan on having additional guides up every single day moving into the future after the game launches because a lot is subject to change. You can check those videos out right now by clicking any of them on the screen.